You've officially done it. You've decided to take your piano playing to the next level. Maybe you were inspired by somebody or maybe it's by pure necessity, but either way, it's led you right here on YouTube. And maybe you've searched all over the endless results and piano tutorials and you've learned the progressions and you still haven't found that thing to give you the sound that you're looking for the feel that you're looking for it's my hope today that I can pick you up and point you in the right direction and use some of the things that I've learned over the years of being on this platform and searching and all of the tutorials and everything and tell you why it hasn't worked so far and what you could do differently but first let's find out what is gospel music what makes gospel music in general so what makes a song gospel I would start off with the obvious and I would say maybe a choir, maybe uh, a tightly tuned drum set, a uh, Hammond organ, um, a bass without a pick. Um, I would say uh, maybe the acoustic piano sound, an MK, maybe a rolling sound of, of the piano. Uh, that would probably define gospel music such as um, a steel guitar and a southern tone defines country and 808s and hi-hats define a hip-hop sound that's what defines gospel but what defines gospel piano what gives you that phrase that I hate the most that gospel sound let me say this there is no phrase i hate worse on youtube than the promise of something giving you that gospel sound because here's the truth people there are not a lot of progressions on face value that can give you that gospel sound because chord progressions on the piano are pretty interchangeable from genre to genre gospel is a nuanced sound a, a, a nuanced approach to music you see gospel music was founded revolutionized and really widespread by people who didn't have all the music theory and all the, uh, the access to things like we have today um it was founded by people who knew the chords that they needed to know, but they were basic chords. And what they did was they relayed feeling and emotion through what they knew. And they did this with nuances and they did this with the pentatonic scale, which is the first thing that you need to know to begin to give yourself that gospel sound. Gospel at its core uses grace notes and slurs. And, and this is what helps define the sound more than the extensions and the backdoor progressions. I mean, imagine if somebody like Jacob Collier, a, a music theorist, uh, made Amazing Grace. It would sound something like sure but not quite that fundamental gospel sound that we've come to know and love but 
here are some nuances that can begin to give you that gospel sound. Um, let's start with grace notes mixed with the pentatonic scale. Something simple as that. Let's say I'm in C sharp. Tonic scale for C sharp would be one, two, three, five, and six. This is going to give you a pentatonic scale. Now, here's a note that you can add in that. So it gives you a blues vibe. But this is the first part of making things sound gospel. -y. The second thing is applying the same pentatonic scale to the minor mode of that. So you will have C, then you will have, in, the, in this, you have C sharp, then you have your flat three, your four, your five, your flat seven, and your one. And you will grace, and you can add the six in that. And the last thing is a, I'll call it bouncing off the four of where you're at. What do I mean by that? This is my one, and then here's my four. So if I, instead of playing it like this, went more for a, that's more gospel -y. Same thing on my five. So why do I have a problem with tutorials that promise to give you that gospel sound through a progression? I mean, that's what I'm doing, right? Well, for me, it's simple. It's a promise that for the most part, you can't really keep. I mean, there are exceptions. But it's the exception and not the rule. Um, just because you learn a 736251 doesn't make you a gospel musician. Um, jazz musicians do it, rock and roll musicians do it. It's, it's a very standardized chord progression. Learning a 1, 2, 3, 4 walk up doesn't make you a gospel musician. But what I feel is that you should be able to know how to gospelize a certain sound, a certain progression, and be aware of what it means to do that, if that's just the genre that you want to play. Now, don't get me wrong, learning all of these fundamental pieces of music make you a better musician, but when you want to gospelize something, you should know how to do that, and what it means to do that. Damien Sneed did an excellent presentation, YouTube video, on how to take a hymn to church, and what it means to to gospelize something. He also did an excellent video where he discussed um, how to use nuances from uh, the different styles of gospel because there are plenty of different styles. There's the West Coast, uh, there's the East Coast, there is you have the Alabama musicians, the Memphis musicians, the Durham musicians the Virginia and West Virginia musicians in Texas and there's just so many different styles and nuances and really what it comes down to is um, what part of jazz are you in, are you choosing to incorporate into your gospel sound the truth is anything can sound gospel if you know what to do with it check this out Now, let's put some nuances in it and see if we can gospelize it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are exceptions to this rule, but they're the exception and not the rule. I'm going to teach three chord progressions that I think are most closely associated with the gospel genre no matter how you play them. 
The first progression is this one. So it's a chromatic walk down from a one, but I have the six in my hand instead of the five. All right. The second progression is this. It's a walk up from the three to the five. And the last progression is this. So here it is in slow motion. The moral of the story is to not be so quick to rely on that next chord or that next progression to give you that gospel sound, but to take those triads, those three note and two note chords and really slur into them and grace notes and walk up into those chords. Quick disclaimer, this video isn't directed towards anybody in particular, it's just my personal experience as it pertains to the gospel genre. Um, Besides, most of the time I found that things that get the oohs and ahs are oftentimes not uh, traditional gospel movements anyway. But think of it like this. If you went to a place that said they were Chick-fil-A and instead of fries and a drink and a lemonade with your meal, uh, you got uh, pears and fruit punch. It could be the best pear and fruit punch or apple that you've ever had in your life. But that ain't Chick-fil-A. So my point is when people come to see you and especially in the church setting or that pastor is trusting you to back him up, or that choir, or whatnot, you could be the best musician in the world, theoretically on paper but people came for what they came for and that's all if you enjoyed this video and want to be a part of the team that makes this happen then consider donating to the cash app if you like the video then like the video subscribe to the channel it helps the youtube algorithm because it's crazy and people may want to watch this video and get buried on the plate in any case I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm out.